Hello, and welcome to another episode of Conversations. If you're new here, so happy to have you. And if you're returning, welcome back. Thanks so much for being an avid listener. I appreciate it. Uh, today, we have Spencer Jones. He is named by his friends as the Prince of Positivity. Um, he's all about positive mindset. And um, he is energetic and positive, all the good things. We discussed books and brainwaves and American Ninja Warrior. We covered it all. So I can't wait for you to hear it. Um, if you'd like to reach out to me, I am on all the socials at Conversations Podcast. Okay, guys, here we go. Hello. Hello, hello. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I am fantastic. It's a beautiful day. Oh my gosh. I know. I saw you're from Wisconsin. I'm I'm in Omaha, Nebraska. Oh, nice. I have some friends down in Nebraska area. It's, Do uh, you? Yeah, yeah Wisconsin. It's a beautiful. beautiful. It's, Wisconsin is too. Yes, it is. We are, uh, I'm very lucky to live here. Yeah. Well, now we're getting to the point where everything's going to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, I'm embracing the fall colors as much as I can. And I know I, I, I love winter. It, it took me, I loved it as a kid. Then I ended up like not liking it for a long time. And then I refound my passion of snowboarding and, and snowshoeing stuff like that. So now that I have something to look forward to, I go, you know, winter's not so bad. I, I enjoy it. Yeah, that's awesome. So have you always been the type of person to just um, go, 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 do, 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 try all the things? Um, pretty much. Uh, I, I don't know if it was ADHD or, or whatnot, but I've always been a very high energy person. So for me, it's let's just go and try different things and try this and go after that. And uh, pretty much I, I've been called the energizer bunny since I've been a kid. <laughs> it, did, did you ever get diagnosed with ADHD? No, never technically diagnosed. Yeah. Um, uh, but th just how I hear how people are with it, uh, you know, they're how they feel the symptoms that's that's how I felt my whole life to some degree, not, uh, not like totally severe ADHD. Um, I did have my brain scanned for, from a friend of mine for, um, like EKG for mm -hmm. uh, brain training. And it was really cool to, to discover my wife and I both got our, our brain scanned and mine, she said, I'm not a doctor, so I can't diagnose, but the, the results show that it's, it's a typical, way an ADHD brain would fire or, or really I'm like oh okay well that's not a big surprise like yeah that makes sense and my wife is a total so like for ADHD it's that it it fires slowly um so like the hyperness is your brain trying to activate and stay active um which is interesting because I, I think most people think that it's always firing and going a thousand miles an hour yes yes it's the opposite um and so my wife on the other hand um was the total opposite of me um and uh just was more uh she has anxiety and stress and worries and things like that so that's how her brain was firing and that's uh the anxiety the stress the worry rumination all that comes from overactive uh brain so it was really interesting oh my gosh that's so cool you got to do that yeah yeah um i a friend of mine uh, has these brain training clinics around the country. And so she came to one of our events that we have and brought her equipment and scanned our brains. So then what happens is you could do that. So then you just know, which is awesome. And then if you want, you can get brain training, quote unquote. Um, I did hand motions, although you can't even see it. But uh, <laughs> brain, like, okay, that's right. This is audio. Um, so we did brain training, um, which basically it's, it trains your brain to fire in a different way to reprogram the neural pathways to to go in a way that's uh more suiting or, or a better way to to live more beneficial yeah, yeah more beneficial way. that's the best way to say it um so like for all it is is like you see sends you a laptop and the nodes you put into on certain parts of your head um and you stay there for like 20 minutes to 30 minutes per session and you watch like uh you hop on netflix or hulu and you watch a tv show or like mm -hmm. we just do a lingo and it's kind of like the that's probably more information never wanted to know but uh it, no it's so interesting it i want to think it's like pavlov's dog so like when 
the screen is, you're watching the screen and your brain's not firing in the way that's beneficial, it dims the, the screen, lowers the sound. And so then it's negative feedback. So your brain goes, oh, this isn't right. And then when it starts firing on the correct neural pathways, then it brightens the screen and amplifies the sound. And so it's really interesting. Like you could program it so you can still understand and watch your show and all that, but it's it's definitely noticeable. So throughout this 20 minute, 30 minutes, the, the screen's getting brighter and dimmer and louder and softer. And through that, it reprograms your brain to fire up using these neural different, different neural pathways. So for me, the ADHD, um, it wasn't as noticeable, um, but I noticed I could focus more. I could, I had more clarity in my thoughts and in my words. Today's a totally different story with that, but uh, <laughs> um, I'm all over the place today. But uh, but usually uh, it, it's much better from doing that. Now my wife, however, where she is shy, uh, anxious, and you know, like she would, she's a teacher. And so even in staff meetings, she wouldn't raise her hand or volunteer for things. Right. Right. So she, uh, she, uh, first we did it in August. She went after like two weeks, two and a half weeks of this brain training. She went into, uh, her, uh, in service and, and prep for school and okay. Staff meeting, whatever. Oh, boom. Raised her hand, started talking. And she didn't even realize it until afterwards. Like, Holy crap. Like I, this is so not me. Like, this is not my personality. This is someone else. And oh, wow. she just kept find, finding that over and over again. We did it for another month or so. as uh, so we did about a month and a half. And uh, it was really, really life-changing for her and just so much uh, a better quality of life. Oh my gosh, that's so fascinating. Yeah, I um, was never diagnosed either, but I have always had a brain that just can't stop. It just right. constantly just thinking of random things nonstop. And so I always thought I probably had ADD or something along those lines. But um, so w as you were talking, saying you were all over the map, I was completely following you. <laughs> right. I was fine with it. I was following right along. No problem. <laughs> I just remember my parents being like, slow down, Spencer. You don't have to go as fast. And it's hard, right? I mean, especially if it's, a, a chemical thing or how your brain fires like okay i can't necessarily control that which i get but yet also i'm guessing just being our ages and how our parents are i was again never diagnosed so i didn't have the med meds or anything it's just like okay i learned to deal with it. i learned the techniques or strategies to help focus when i need to focus or shut my mouth when i need to shut it um you know some days are better than others but uh right but it's like okay i've learned those things over the over those years yeah. So is that since you and your wife are opposites, do you guys feel like you balance each other out? Or is it a lot of times where you're just like, I can't relate to you. You can't relate to me. We don't even think along the same lines. We surprisingly balance each other out pretty well. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. It's not like, oh, I mean, there's times when I go like, I have no idea how you got to that point. No <laughs> clue. And there's days where she says that to me, but usually, which is kind of freaky, uh, we could follow each other's patterns pretty good where I'm like, oh, I see how your brain got you here or how you got to this point. But we also balance each other out in thoughts. Uh, and like, as we're trying to think of, I don't know, it's for the business of a retreat or let's do this thing, or let's just talk about whatever it is. We have different points of view on it, obviously, two different people. But since our brains work totally differently, we have those different thoughts and, and angles that we look at things. And it just helps us be more well-rounded, I guess. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I love that. So what exactly do you do for a living? What is your job? So um, I created my own job now. I was a middle school, high school choir director for nine years. Love doing that. I'm a classically trained musician, but now I help people regain their energy sovereignty. Um, I'm leading this movement to really help people understand and realize that they're giving their energy away to things that they uh, unknowingly a lot of the time and how to regain it and re energize themselves so that they could shine their light as bright as they can and chase their passion, live their lives to the max, live a fulfilled life and help others do the same. So what is it that people are um, on average giving their energy to instead of themselves? Is it work? A lot of it's work, uh, right? It, it could be work. It could be um, social media, anything that really drains your energy, other people. Uh, and it's a lot of little things throughout our life. And, and we, give our energy away, as I said, without even realizing it. So like, if you got, if you gossip, if you're listening and watching the news and negativity, if you're dwelling on those negative thoughts, if you're ruminating on the 
the limiting beliefs that you have about yourself if you're not taking care of your body physically, mentally, spiritually, you know, all those things. Um, we help people realize that at first open their awareness to that. Be like, oh, this is why you're feeling tired, drained, exhausted, all of that. And, uh, and then here's how we can help you turn it around and we guide them through that process. That's awesome. So do you think social media has a huge play in all of that? Um, it, yes and no. Um, I mean, I think anything we, we put our eyes in front of or surround ourselves with plays a big part in it and social media just being what it is the big massive uh, time and energy source that it is it, it could it definitely plays into it for many people now the cool thing about social media is it can be really beneficial but it can also be draining at times right so for many people yeah i hear this quite a bit that social media it's it's negative all the time and that it's it's frustrating or that it's yeah just this negative space constantly mm -hmm. and it can be but social media generally is just an algorithm and that algorithm is wants to keep you on the platform as long as possible and it's uh, it's the same algorithm that life has and that is you you get what you surround yourself with or what you focus on so for social media if you focus on the negative negatives if you like the the dramatic posts if you're following and reading those things those news stories you're surrounding yourself with people that are are sharing that negativity Facebook says, oh, you like this? Cool. We're going to keep sharing this with you, right? And negativity sells. It's, uh, you know, 90% of news is negative nowadays as it is. Positivity, not so much. So that if you focus on that in life, they're going to get more of that in life, but also then on social media. Well, you could turn that around and as, as I've done it and our energizers are doing as well, they curate their feed to be more positive. So yeah. you can get rid of the negativity or the majority of the negativity in your social media feed so that okay i'm going on facebook instagram uh tiktok whatever that you then uh are showing more positives more uplifting uh videos comments statements pictures people energy and all that's now pouring into you as opposed to being draining uh and same thing with life right if you focus on the positives the good things your gratitudes you're sharing the, the positives the love the life all that then you're going to get more of that in life. So social media plays, it, it does play a big part in it for many people, but it's not always negative. It doesn't have to be. It all depends on how you use it. Yeah. That's really interesting. You said it like that. Cause that made like a light bulb go off thinking the algorithm is based off of what you're looking at, what you're searching for. So that's kind of like an internal, um, awareness of, well, that's what I've been trying to find is negative things and that's why it keeps showing me more and more negative things right and, and you don't realize that so many people I've got, no. I, want, I want these positives i want the good things in life and and why am i just it's always negative always negative well okay hold on yeah if you stopped and read that that dramatic post or someone calling for help or or complaining about so and so i bet you stopped and read that maybe read some of their comments well facebook sees that or whatever it is it sees that recognizes it so it's going to show you more of those and less of the positives um, what kind of post are you making or sharing out there or liking or reacting to or mm -hmm. things like that? It, it really makes a difference. And it's a hard thing for people to to be open to at first, right? Because they don't want to accept the responsibility. Right. But, but the truth is we are responsible for our energy, whether we like to admit it or not. And we've just, ever since we've been a kid, we've been instructed and programmed to give it away like to our parents right we were dependent on our parents as a kid so well i'm giving as uh, if you're trying to be um protect not protected but uh directed by someone right you're, you're giving them the permission to control your energy right like oh you tell me what to do my parents tell me what to do do this and we need to because we need to rely on our parents as a kid right for life and for substance and and right. that, that, okay, it's programmed in that way uh, into us. But as we get older, we, we can, if we choose to realize, oh, we have that responsibility. I gave it to my parents. Okay, my parents were abusive or they weren't uh, helpful in these areas, but maybe they were in these areas. Okay, like they did the best they could. So now let's, let's let that go. Let, let go of that guilt, the shame, the, the hatred, the anger and say, all right, let's take those lessons that I can learn from that. Let's implement them going forward. And, and, 
be intentional about who we give our energy to, right? If I'm part of a a group that's draining me, and every time I go to it, I feel drained and exhausted. Well, I, I don't want to spend my time with that group then, but many of us do, right? We just think this is the only thing, or we don't realize that that's what's draining us. But when we realize, oh, I'm feeling drained here. Okay, I'm, I'm the controller of my energy. I can give it to people and I can let people pour into me or I don't have to let them, right? And so uh, we have to make those hard choices at times, leave those groups or the routines or habits we have or people in our life that are no longer serving us because we've, we're changing and we're, we're changing our, from our old ways to a, a way that's serving us, that's energizing us and allowing us then to positively influence and affect the, the world. Mm. What got you on the positivity bandwagon? Um, so a fun question. So for me, uh, what got me into it is my fitness journey, uh, initially. So, um, over the years, uh, I had a high metabolism. I was very lucky in high school, but then college hit and second year of college, I started gaining weight and I gained over 30 pounds. Um, kind of did a yo-yo diet for a little bit, um, up, down, up, down. I was teaching then, um, middle school, high school choir, and I was teaching and I just I was 40 pounds heavier than I was in high school. And I just really didn't like the way I looked and felt. I, uh, I felt slow, uh, groggy, uh, you know, walking upstairs. I, I wasn't horrible, but I started to feel it more. And one of my passions is kayak fishing. Uh, and I realized it was getting harder to chase that passion, to paddle the kayak, to put it on top of my car, all those things. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, something needs to change. And, uh, you know, I kept trying to put it off and put it off and realized, uh, okay, this something needs to be done. So then it was December 26th of, of um, 2013 that I then said, all right, let's go get fit. This is a day I'm committing to do it. And so I started working out with my brother-in-law who was uh, into fitness. And so we started working out together. We ended up doing the P90X, that home mm -hmm. street mm -hmm. workout program, lost 20 pounds doing that. And from there, I, I realized, oh my gosh, I feel so much better. I feel more energized and alive. And I started to continue my workout journey. Well, now I'm 40 pounds lighter than I was. So back to like where my high school weight was, but I, but I'm more muscular and feel strong and all that. But to get to your question of the positivity and that mindset and energy for me, it was on this fitness journey. Uh, so I did a lot of those at home workout programs and started coaching and helping people with fitness. Cause I'm like, I feel amazing. I'm going to help others. And what was being shared and promoted in that group is to do uh, personal development. And for me, um, I was a teacher and I, I thought personal development was like professional development. And I did not like it at all because we had our in-service days. And uh, as a music person, those in-service days, and even as general ed, they yeah. seemed very worthless in, in many ways. I know they tried, but yeah, I mean, a lot of it was my mindset. I realized now, but a lot of it just didn't seem to apply and it was seemed like a waste of time. And why would I want to do that in my personal life, let alone I have to do it in my business and my work life, you know, my professional. So I'm like, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Well, I kept hearing it over and over again. And I finally gave it a fair shake, a fair try. And I uh, listened to the book, Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. And I said, all right, let's start implementing some of the lessons. And kid you not, the first day uh, I implemented one of the lessons, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. And from there, I just kept implementing and seeing amazing results and just kept going one book after another, audiobooks. And I, because uh, I didn't like reading at the time, uh, then a friend turned me on to some other books, which got me to enjoy reading, uh, actually physically reading a book. And so I started doing that as well. And uh, that then led me on this growth of, oh, my mindset's making a big uh is a big component of me enjoying life and getting the most out of life. So I started diving into what does that look like? How do you change that? How, you know, what are the, the strategies and tactics, all of those things. And then that led me into the whole positive uh, mindset, positive and abundance mindset. Um, I've always been a more positive person, more of an optimist, but now with that, I've learned why that that was and how I can really grow that uh, the positivity abundant mindset by reprogramming the brain how does the neural pathways work how can we really help ourselves out with that and then along with all that's of right positivity everything's energy and so that's hence why now it's more 
focus on energy. Yes, positivity, abundance, all that's very high vibrational love, high vibrational energy, as opposed to sadness, anger, hatred, which is more low vibrational. Um, we are focused on really helping people have the positive abundant mindset, but regaining and taking back their energy, their energy sovereignty, as I like to call it, just to help them live their lives to the max, right? Get the most out of life, whatever that is for them. Yeah. Oh my gosh. There's like 5 million questions I came up with through that whole spiel. <laughs> okay. First of all, I've never heard of that book. Eat that frog. I've never heard of that. Such a great book. Eat that frog by Brian Tracy. I loved it. It was um, actionable advice and tips uh, to help you conquer your day. So real uh, to summarize it real quickly and briefly, basically eat that frog is do your hardest task first. Um, the one you're dreading and don't want to do the most because guess what? That's what we procrastinate on, right? We do the things we like first, but yeah. instead push those off to later and get that one you're dreading done first. And then you get to do the things you like afterwards. And it, it's amazing what things you can get done. Yeah, no, I love that. And like I said, I, I think I've read just about every other book, but I have not heard of that one. So I will definitely read it. Um, what's your favorite book right now? Oh my gosh. Um, ah. Favorite book right now, and it's a different one that I'm reading at the moment, although I'm enjoying what I'm reading, is uh, The Energy Bus. I love, love, love The Energy Bus. Uh, such a great book. Uh, very short, quick read. And also then right there would be uh, Chop Wood, Carry Water. Those two. Have My gosh, I haven't heard of any of these. Nice. I'm, gonna, I'm writing them down. <laughs> Both of those are really quick, easy read, short chapters as in like two to three maybe five pages for yeah. a chapter. Um, those books got me into reading itself because I needed those short, quick wins, right? ADHD brain. Yes, um, yes. So for me that, and there's audiobook versions of them too, but uh, really good books about uh, some mindset and energy and positivity that, yeah, those are my all time two favorite books. So is that what gave you the idea to do the podcast, the um, daily energize so you could just do like little quick blurbs? Kind of, um, it's kind of funny that actually came a couple of years after I had another podcast for a long time, the Jones and four show, which is where I interviewed people and did solo shows about uh, living your life to the max, whole bunch of different, uh, we've talked to Olympians, to movie stars, to, uh, just other coaches and, and people living their daily life, right. People who have beaten cancer and stuff like that. So it's mm -hmm. amazing. Um, the daily energize came, I started that Oh, as of this recording, a couple of just over a year ago, September of 2020, uh, 2021, mm -hmm. um, so Daily Energize. And that was more just because I realized people needed some energy, needed some positivity uh, in their life. So we started doing those quick jolts of energy just to help give people like, all right, cool. I'm going to start for my day. I feel good. I feel energized. A little quick tip, an idea or thought to keep them going on their day. Um, I do a weekly jolt email jolt of positivity email kind of on the same line where it's like here's this positive idea thought for you to do go uh for this week but then i thought a, the podcast would be nice to reach people on a daily level yeah do you ever feel like you run out of ideas oh <laughs> there's times there's times that i feel like i've uh i've kind of ran ran on empty but um i have a virtual assistant who's awesome and she helps brainstorms and writes down ideas for me um, and I also batch out my content a lot, which helps. Um, oh, sure. Right. So like for me, uh, we have all of the daily energize episodes recorded through December and it's end of October now. Mm -hmm. So like we have already recorded all the way through December. So, which is nice because then if I have a point where I feel burnt out or like, oh, yeah, we need ideas. So like I batch it and I'll record for a couple more weeks and then I'll be done recording for throughout December and I'll start back again January just so I can get new ideas come back fresh and you know we might touch the same topic again but we look at it at a different angle or it's you know it's a different time and it might be two three months later that people hear it and you know we all need those reminders oh yeah for sure I love that I just when I saw that you were doing one like every day I was like wow because sometimes I mean even doing a weekly I'm just like you really want it to be impactful. You really want it to, to be meaningful and not that you're just putting content out just because it's due, you know? Okay. Um, so I, I was just like, wow, I wonder if he ever just is like, ah, what am I going to talk about today? I'll tell you my first 
um 150 i think 150 to 200 episodes like that 50 episode stretch i was starting to feel drained from it like i don't know what to talk about i don't know like we've done everything already i don't i have no clue um yeah. so it got to that point um so then i i stepped away for a little bit you know a couple weeks and then had my my um va suggest some things in there and i like give her like come up with a hundred ideas for this for these all these episodes and she, so she comes up with ideas and either those will work perfectly or i'll tweak them a little bit but from there then we just we just go and when i came back i'm like oh okay i feel fresh i feel ready to go uh yeah and I'm, a different perspective is always really nice yeah exactly i mean that's i started running out of ideas with the daily uh with my jones and four show uh which caused me to to be like yeah you know we're good I also started to feel a lot more like uh a chore at that time. And I'm like, okay, this isn't, we don't need this. So let's, right. let's give it a break. We'll, we'll do a season. I have 130 episodes of that one for season one. So we'll do like a 15 to 20 episode season two, I lining up people to interview and chat with and, and have on the show. And we'll record those December and January to release probably start February for 20 weeks or whatever. Yeah. Well, and your wife with her being a teacher, she's used to talking, but my husband's not, he's very much an introvert. So he's just like, I don't understand how you can talk like all day. To people. <laughs> and I'm like, I love it. It's what gives me energy. It gives right. me life to talk to people. I love it. Right. Um, yeah. Funny. My wife's an introvert. Uh, she's teaches. So she's great around kids and can do that, but put in a room full of adults and she's like, mm, not so much. No, <laughs> So, um, who or what inspires you? Who or what inspires me? Um, uh, my wife inspires me just with her tenacity for life and just the go get him attitude that she has and chasing her passions and dreams. Um, other people who inspire me are you, are people who chase their passions, who, who go after their goals, right? Who don't let limiting beliefs or thoughts or people slow them down or, or stop them right it slows us down it slows all of us down at times but yeah. we don't let it stop us uh that really inspires me well i think um like we were saying earlier about people focus on the negative i mean the news i don't even watch the news i'm informed because my husband will tell me if there's something catastrophic that's going to happen but otherwise after 9 11 i just cut myself off from the news it was just detrimental to my health so i just stopped it but um why is it that we're so drawn like social media everything why do we want to see like other people fail why do we want to watch the train wrecks you know it's like it's not healthy but we're so it's like it's it's in us. We're drawn to it. Yeah, it's not healthy at, at all, as you said, but yet negativity sells. So uh, if you think about it as a, a news or marketing or moneymaker business, people are drawn to it. So uh, the people are like, oh, well, let's keep selling this. Let's keep sharing this as opposed to the positives. Uh, back 70 years ago, 1950s, it used to be 10% or 15% of the news was negative. The rest was positive. Now it's 90, 10, 90% 90 negative, 10% is positive that's being shared. The reason that we're drawn to it, I, I think, and this is just, just my thoughts, yeah. is because it's we like rating ourselves compared to other people. We like judging other people because it allows our, our ego, uh, that voice inside us to be like, okay, we're better than them. We're worse than them. So how can we get continually get better? Oh, look how worse off they had it. We could do better. Um, and it's a survival tactic uh, sure. in our in our in our ego in our brains to be like, okay, how can we survive? Right? We put everyone on this these different pedestals on this ladder. Let's see how we can tear them down to raise ourselves up so that we are here longer. We are the survivors. You know, looking at it through through those lenses. I think it's more of a survival thing that yeah. then we just, and we get the dopamine kicks from it. And in some ways of going, Oh, this is a negative. Oh, it brings me down. But we get some points of, Oh, I'm better than this. or I'm better than this until we get yeah. to the point of where like, we're just focused on um, that, that ego that, or that inner bully as my friend, Sean Douglas likes to say that inner critic that just beats us up saying you're worthless, you're stupid, you're dumb, you're ugly, you're like, you know, fill in the blanks with, how we beat ourselves up. We keep listening to that over and over again and we just sink lower and lower and lower. Our self-esteem goes lower and lower and lower. And then 
then we have to dig ourselves out of that pit. And it's so hard to turn that around. Um, and so then we see the negativity and you're like, oh yeah, right. Like, oh yeah, that, that, that is worse than me, but, oh, <laughs> I am, but I'm, but I'm worse than all these other things. And it's just, it's this kind of never ending cycle. So do some research and find out why we are so attracted to negativity. Yeah, I know. I think that would be fascinating to to learn that. And it could be, like you said, something that's just in our DNA from back in caveman days where you're sizing people up, you know, for mating or whatever reason. But okay. um, yeah, it is. It's interesting. So uh, just a completely off topic. Are you going to try out for American Ninja Warrior? Oh, love that question. Um, <laughs> I have applied the last three years. I will be pl- applying again this year um, as long as I can... I should be able to. Uh, yeah, so I'll be continue to apply and see if they take me in. Um, but I would love to try out. I love that show. And I am not athletic at all. Like, I'm the furthest thing. My husband's the athlete. I wish I was, but I cannot. The stick to I did not get that gene. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, I love watching that show. I just think that those people are so inspiring when you see really young, young people come and try. And then the old, old people. Right? It's just like, good for them. That is amazing. I love it. So, yeah, I saw you were into ninja stuff. So I had to ask you that. No, I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's been hard, right? So for me, like the dedication and sticking to fitness or whatever, that all boils down to your reason why, like, why do you want these things? And that why has to be strong enough to get you up and out doing those, whatever the thing is, uh, when you don't want to, and having, you know, you set yourself up for success, having accountability buddies, having people there to support you, a team, uh, whatever, you know, there's, there's all those different tactics and strategies to help. Um, so for me, it was, uh, being healthy and fit. And then my reason why I just kept getting deeper and deeper as I went along and, um, to the point with the ninja course I built in my backyard, it just, it's a fun way to challenge myself and and to keep growing. And heck this two years ago, I started doing handstands, uh, with a person who was 61 at the time. He's 63 now, um, about to be 64. And he just started handstands with me, right? Two years ago. Oh my and, gosh. Um, and then he jo- started doing ninja stuff for the first time in his life uh, with me two years ago. And so, yeah, 61 or is he 62 at the time? Maybe 62 at the time. In any case, uh, yeah, so he started doing ninja and and running the monkey bars and doing the ninja grips and pegboard, all those different things. So, uh, oh my gosh. Like, it doesn't matter your age, you, you still can do it. And um, yeah, like, you, you got it. All right, you, you can do it. And we have fun events here. You know, we do a different events, a uh, winter yoga retreat, meditation retreat. But we also have a crush and conquer day uh, weekend where people, we do different fitness things. It's very fitness oriented, but it's really about growing your confidence and abilities. So we put people on the ninja course and we guide them through it. And we, everyone, everyone has success on it so that uh, you, you and your husband come and have some fun on the ninja course and, and <laughs> conquer it. I mean, you will conquer parts of that ninja course i can guarantee it oh my gosh he would love to try that i have no doubt in my mind (laughs) um so what's on your bucket list what what is besides maybe being on that show do you have a bucket list um i not not an official one um Mm -hmm. so i mean my wife and i we love to travel we love to see the world and and learn from other people um i guess bucket list item for me is to really it sounds might sound corny but to impact and help over a billion people um, regain their energy. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, I love it. It's so unselfish. It's something where you're trying to help other people. There's nothing wrong with that at all. That's amazing. Well, we're, well thank you. I appreciate that. We're, we're working hard at it. We're growing our community and families growing every day. And it's, it's exciting to see people, like you said, ask me like what inspires me. It's seeing people go from, I don't feel like I have any control whatsoever to, oh, I'm starting to get it. Oh, I'm, I'm finding more positives of it, finding more energy throughout the day to, to totally reclaiming it and being in their energy sovereignty. Like that's, it's, it's inspiring and empowering. And I just love seeing and helping that and being a, a guide for that. I love that. What a great message. Okay. Well, tell people where they can find you. Um, well, I, first of all, I want to say, um, I mean, I, as you're recording this, I don't know how you're planning on putting this all out. If it's all just one set thing, this has been a very fun and different interview, which is kind of fun. So you just kind of get like the totally raw, open, whatever Spencer Jones, totally hyper and chatting about, <laughs> and about brain training and all that good stuff. 
Um, so there you go. Um, so you could find me uh, a couple different places. I would love to uh, meet up with you on social media. If you are on there, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Jones and four or TikTok at Jones and four. That's J O N E S I N F O R. Like you're Jones in for something. You want something like you right. want energy. Um, you can find me there. Uh, otherwise you can check out my website. Um, my nickname that people gave me is the Prince of Positivity. So you can go to princeofpositivity.com and learn more about me, our, our things that we do. We have an online uh, personal growth academy where you can have 24-7 access to trainings and courses and different things to help you uh, in, your, in your life, to help you regain that energy and to, to be at your best. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you so much, Spencer, for taking time out of your day. I know you're a busy guy, so I appreciate um, you spending some time with me so that we could spread your message. It's amazing. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for allowing me the space to come and chat. And I appreciate you and everything you are putting out in the world. So keep shining, keep glowing. And yeah, just keep being you. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you so much, Spencer. I'll be in touch. Sounds great. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.